we will pass the meeting over to Archie. Let's just get you unmuted, Archie. Can you unmute Archie, please, Flo? There you go. Um, where's Paul? Have, have I got um screen sharing facility then, Paul? I can give that for you. Yeah, let's actually. There's something wrong with my mouse, Flo. Can you? <coughs> oh no, I'm going to have to do that. Aren't I? Here we go. Got you, Archie. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, let me just uh, intro first. Uh, hi everyone. My name's Archie. I'm an addict. And um, so I uh, just a couple of disclaimers. First of all, don't speak on behalf of Narcotics Anonymous. Uh, I'm not an expert on, on uh, the steps. I'm just a, a recovering addict uh, <clears throat> who's engaged with the process of recovery with Narcotics Anonymous. Part of that has been um, a number of the years, a number of workshops where we've done basic text studies. You know, a textbook is a study book want to be studied and um, it's great to see Aaron there in Turkey. Hey Aaron, uh, Aaron's involved in, in these initial groups that we do. Uh, I'm going to make a little apology first and foremost. I haven't done this um, workshop on the Zoom platform as yet and it's been like five years since I did one. It's going to be perfectly imperfect like myself and my recovery. Uh, just on that recovery, um, where am I? I'm like just shy of 14 and a half years uh, in recovery. Didn't didn't relapse from my first week in Narcotics Anonymous. I know we've got a chapter, chapter seven, <coughs> relapse, but it's not essential. Just throw that in, although it is a, a part of some people's path. And it, it's a, um, as you're going to see now, might not be the normal what you're used to seeing. And uh, Paul, if you field the questions, and um, so the basis of it is a newcomer who walks into the room, never experienced anything of Narcotics Anonymous. And how are we gonna save that newcomer well uh, when there can be uh, an overwhelming amount of information, some of it in a language that isn't easy to understand, a new language that people quite often pick up quickly. And, and the purpose of our basic text study groups and the old home group is to just try and take some of the mystery out of the steps, Narcotics Anonymous, spiritual journeys, quests, whatever you call it, and just say, look, this is my experience. And that's what, what this little workshop is about, is how you, where you are, can set up a basic text study group. So our program, um, as it says, many books have been written about the nature of addiction. And this book is concerns itself with the nature of recovery. Give yourself a break. So this is the first thing we try to communicate, or I try to communicate to a newcomer. Um, so what is, what is a basic text? It's a book to be studied. We should be um, looking to see what advice, guidance, suggestions the book's saying for somebody if they think they suffer from the disease of addiction. And, um, and, uh, and one of the things that my sponsor said to me early on and what we should be is a useful tool for someone in recovery is get yourself a dictionary. So as newcomers, we're students of recovery and we're learning how to live without using. So we learn to live and then live what we've learned. <coughs> so uh, you have to bear with me as well. I can't remember what was on the next slide. It's been that long. So if a newcomer asks you, well, how do I know this way? Because you lot to me seem like a load of cranks talking about spiritual awakenings, holding hands in circles at the end, chanting. And then um, <clears throat> if you straight away into <clears throat> oh, look at that, I would get God to interrupt me now, wouldn't I? <clears throat> with, a, with a cough, <clears throat> hay fever. So 
There's evidence of a growing and ongoing progressive recovery shown in the expansion of meetings and members worldwide. So if you look at the preface to the sixth edition here, since it's um, from 82, the World Service Conference in the basic text, there were about 2,700 meetings. So now if you look all across the world, 130 countries, 65 languages, hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people, evidence to find a proven program of recovery. And that's not even talking about our predecessors. Here is tangible evidence of a program recovery that works. So again, we just, you know, it's difficult to believe. As a newcomer, my problem was, um, I was still, um, my thinking was distorted. I didn't know right from wrong, fact from fiction, feelings into it, interfering with what I seen, what I felt. You lot didn't look like me. You didn't sound like me. Why should I believe you? So the only thing we can do is introduce them to the text, which provides that evidence for them to read for themselves. <clears throat> now, in the introduction to the basic text, uh, we, we often quite share that this book is the shared experience of the Fellowship of Narcotics Anonymous. We welcome you to read this text. Um, I'm just going to read it out for you. Apologies for that. We welcome you to read this text, hoping that you will choose to share with us this new life we found. We have by no means found a cure for addiction. We only offer a proven plan for daily recovery. I won't read it all. But I do like this. You know, we're grateful for the programme of AA for showing us the way to approve proper recovery. But we've broadened their perspective. A single substance isn't the problem. Alcoholism is too limited to the term for us. Our problem is not a specific substance. It's a disease called addiction. We believe that as a fellowship, we've been guided by a greater consciousness and grateful for the direction that has enabled us to build upon a proof. Now, listen, I have a little joke about this. I don't know if you do too, you lot. About like, but like, it is nice in these partisan times of the... Uh, What's the better fellowship? A, A, N, A, C, A, whatever A. Uh, I'm only a member of Narcotics Anonymous, and I can only talk about that. But it does say in our book, it's a greater consciousness. Aye, so uh, looking in my dictionary, I think, I think that means it's an improvement. That's just my humble opinion and not one of N, A. And it, it is said lightly and in jest. So <clears throat> in chapter one, who is an addict? So the reading card, I don't know if you're anything like me as a newcomer, but the reading card says most of us do not have to think twice about the question. We know our whole life and thinking. We live to use, used to live. Very simply an addict. So that's a very simple description. However, when I arrive as a newcomer, I'm looking for a back door. I'm looking for a reason to exclude myself. I don't want to give up my use of drugs completely for the rest of my life. That's too frightening too daunting and it says most of us not all of us i might be different i might be all right i might be able to go back to using when i've got myself on my feet again that was a normal process for me and people i've worked with since the fear the confusion and um i cannot diagnose anyone else as an addict what i do is i present them with the basic text and I ask them to highlight in who is an addict, everything they relate to. We also repeat that process in the chapter, why we're here. What I do is ask them to diagnose themselves as suffering from the disease of addiction. No good me telling you you're an addict. No good me telling you you're powerless. No good me saying you've got a disease. You need to look into the literature and come up with that answer for yourself. So that's the process initially. Uh, when working with, with a newcomer with the basic text. So, <clears throat> also, what, what we do in our sponsorship family is we will give them a list of daily suggestions of how to work a programme, not, not because we think it's a good idea or that it's a nice opinion. It's the fact that the literature tells us. So if we go for just for today, uh, chapter, living the programme on page 99, 
it gives us a list of things to do on a daily basis to start working a program. <coughs> so um, I don't know whether to actually read that or like, should we invite somebody else to read what it says on the page? Sure, or, a good idea, actually. Would somebody like to read it a little interactive? Has anyone got a raised yeah. hand who'd like to read that out for us? There we go, Shannon, we'll just get you unmuted. Um, if you're there, Flo, if you could do that for me, that'd be great. Or Matt, there's something, there's something done with my mouth. You can get Shannon unmuted. Got it. Got it. Great. All right. So uh, just for today, living the program, page 99. Sharing and regularly scheduled meetings and one-on-one -on -one with recovering addicts helps us stay clean. Attending meetings reminds us of what is what it is like to be new and of the progressive nature of our disease. Attending our, our, home, our home group provides encouragement from the people that we get to know. This sustains our recovery and helps us in our daily living. When we honestly tell our own story, someone else might identify with us. Serving the needs of our members and making our message available gives us a feeling of joy. Service gives us opportunities to grow in ways that touch all parts of our lives. Our experience in recovery may help them deal with their problems. What worked for us might work for them. Most addicts are able to accept this type of sharing, even from the very beginning. The get togethers after our meetings are good opportunities to share things that we didn't get to discuss during the meeting. This is also a good time to talk one-on-one -on -one with our sponsors. Things we need to hear will surface and become clear to us. Thanks for letting me read. Thanks. Uh, <clears throat> so getting into it, this is what you need to start a book study. You will need a pen, obviously. You'll need highlighters. The picture of the phone is for a mobile dictionary or to keep your textbooks in, and you'll need a basic text. And on the side of the, the picture there, we've got the directions of how to study the book. So in yellow, suggestions or directions and the dictionary definition. We've got in pink, the musts, the essential words, and questions in green. Now, when we were doing this, we would go page by page and we'd go through and say, that's a direction. It's giving you an action. So if we go back to the last slide, you say, now sharing in regularly scheduled meetings and one-on-one -on -one with Addict. So there's the suggestion. And here's what it says you will get as a result. It will help you to stay clean. Um, so it seems very simple, but if you're a newcomer who doesn't know and has lots of questions, giving those simple directions of how to study the book and find the actions that you need to put into your personal recovery. I'm going to say this, it's, it's an opinion of mine. <clears throat> I've got loads of opinions. I, it's, um, I, I have these, it's an opinion about an observation, yeah? I don't know of anyone here, maybe a show of hands on the screen. Anyone ever heard someone in a narcotics and meeting talk about my program? Anyone? Do you want to just do the show of hands thing just to get a little bit interactive? I can see some of your faces now. Well, I don't mean wave at the screen like we just don't care. I meant like little blue hands. Yeah, me, 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 me. Or an annotation hand. Yeah. Anyone heard it? My program. My program. When I arrived in Narcotics Anonymous, I never came with a program on offer to help you guys. Yeah, I had nothing. I was bankrupt. So when I when I hear people say that, I'm trying not to be too much of a um, rigid, but there's no such thing as my program. I arrived in Narcotics Anonymous, was introduced to the program. How I work the program is more fitting, yeah? Is it more uh, of a, a statement of the, the actual truth of it? Because I never had a program to give you. Any program I had, useless. It was no good for me. Why would it be any good for you? So, <clears throat> um, so there's the directions there. We read a page at a time. We highlight in each respective colour word in the text. We're given a direction, the most word. And in the group setting, after reading the page, We'd open it up for discussion amongst the group. We'd ask members to raise the hand and share what and why they've highlighted a passage. 
and there are differences between members at times. And this may be due to where the individual is in their personal recovery and what they relate to. And you have to remember when discussing recovery, two opposing rights do not make somebody wrong. Yeah, there's, there's multiple understandings and personal understandings in recovery. And then another issue started to arise. And I, I don't know where it is in here, but I'm gonna have a quick look. Yeah, these are just some examples, but I'm just gonna jump somewhere else and then come back. Or maybe I'm not, it's not there. Apologies. <laughs> it's on another copy of this. Right, let's do that again. Let me see faces so I can ask. There'd be an issue in the in the discussions where people with some recovery, they would say, this is a direction. And um, I've got it highlighted in orange in one of the pictures. It was not a direction. It was a statement. There's a big difference between statements of people's experience and direction, talking about what they got as a result. So they'd be, so there'd be heated debates in the book studies of one person saying, that's a direction. And another one saying, there is no direction. They're not giving you an instruction or a suggestion. And then the other person saying, yeah, but the outcome I've experienced. So we have to be careful. Like, is there clear direction for somebody who's never read a book, never been to a meeting, never experienced recovery? Is there a direction in there? And then even that's open for, and I'm just going to say, say this actually, just jump in. The Just For Today card. This is coming in now just because it is. The first line in the Just For Today card, without looking, who'd like to volunteer what it says? The first line of the Just For Today card. There'll be someone. There'll be someone who knows all the reading cards off by art. Yeah. Someone want to put their virtual hand up? Yeah. Or just wave at the screen. Oh, here's Crystal. I'd go for Crystal, yeah, definitely. She was umming and ahhing. It's too late now. The spotlight's on you, Crystal. I, don't, I, I think this is wrong, but I'm going to say... Yeah. Um, um, say the beginning of it again. The Just for today. I'll, I won't use. Um, the, I'll be... How, I forget how they phrase it, but isn't it, I won't use or I'll be cleaner? <laughs> well, we hope it's something like that, don't we? I, anyone else want to jump in and have a little go? Matt, Matt B. Just for today. I said, tell I, yourself. Tell you yeah. and then oh. Oh, I don't. <laughs> just for today. <laughs> hey, just for today. Tell still. Come on, we all know it. Doug, let's go blank. with Doug. Let's go with Doug. Good Doug. Just for today. I... Yeah, he needs unmuting. Flo, yeah. can you do the muting and unmuting? I do, I I can't do it from here. Just for today. And can you mute uh, Crystal after as well? <laughs> it's not work. Oh, just for today, my thoughts will be on my recovery. Oh, done a minute. Yeah. Is Doug reading this off the phone? I'm not. I'm, I'm trying to play a game. <laughs> He's using his initiative, isn't he? Yeah. <laughs> well, what's the rest of it? He's playing a game. He's not. He's not. Go on then, Doug. No, just for today, my thoughts will be on my recovery, living and enjoying life without the use of drugs. Fantastic. Brilliant. Just for Thanks, today. Doug. If you're looking yeah. at that in the literature, is there anything that separates those, right? There's a comma after my thoughts will be on my recovery. So that there's a pause there. So when advising newcomers, like, well, how do I stop thinking about using? How do I lose the obsession? And it tells us there, it gives us a direction. When my thoughts are on my recovery, how do we shape our thoughts to recovery? Anyone know any suggestions for that? Yeah, I suppose it's a bit difficult. Loads of mutes. Attending meetings. Like it said in the previous slide, meetings after the meetings, discussing what step you're on, asking questions, listening to shares, prayer, activities. We've got so many of them that start directing our thinking towards recovery. And when you engage in that process, the, the result is... I live and enjoy life without the use of drugs. I'm not thinking about when I get nine 
mumps clean. I might have a little and all that. But actually, you can do sometimes. That's a different topic. So let's gonna just give you some a little example. There's the visuals of it there. Step nine on page 40. And uh, timing is in the central part of this step. It says, we should make amends when the opportunity presents, presents itself. So there's a clear direction, isn't there? Uh, except when to do so would cause more harm. I'm just gonna ask someone what they think that means in terms of their, so let's have hands again. What does that mean in terms of practical application in recovery? Marie, Marie, uh, yeah. I've, yeah. Changed, I've changed the setting so everyone can just unmute themselves now. But if you can mute oh, yeah. yourselves once you're done speaking. Mary Claire? I, thought, I think that maybe if you're making a like if you can make amends to people, then I suppose like if you can make amends to people, then fine. But if you're going to cause me harm to make that amend, mm -hmm. then you would do it in another way. Okay. Let me ask, uh, let's let's go to Gillian. Have you got some? No, that's fine, <laughs> Marie Claire. That's fine. Gillian, have you got anything to add to that? Not repeat, just add. Uh -huh. um, so basically, there was circumstances in which if I, um, you know, like they, they, they had me so, like so much has been put to bed, right? But I was working on my recovery, like, so I was working on my recovery. I was <clears> That cleared up the damage and the wreckage of my past and I had somewhat did that you know there were circumstances if I had went back into these circumstances then either myself or my family or somebody else could have been injured and it would have gave me a whole other situation to then revisit you know like okay. it would have way too much damage to me or somebody else me I'm, or show somebody else I'm not casting aspersions or judgments here but there's two schools of thoughts on this. Others, do we put ourselves in others or do we not? That's one school of thought, but it's one a lot of people don't really focus on is it says timing is an essential part of this step. You know, the basic principle, step nine, and you'll all argue with me and I don't care, is patience. It says so in the book, patience. Right, so do we make amends at the first opportunity? Do we make amends just because we've met the person and it is an opportunity? Or, so I'll give you my own personal experience with this. I caused a lot of harm in my family unit and my brother wouldn't even let me know where he lived. He'd meet, he met, we, we discovered we were both living in London and he'd meet me somewhere neutral in the West End that wasn't the opportunity that it speaks of for me to give, to make my amends, because I'd just seen him. This is just for me. I had a, a year's indirect amends process to do before the opportunity to make a formal amend was there. That's just my interpretation of what that means. And um, it's engaging in the debate about what the direction is and then what it means. Ultimately, take the view from the, the guidance of your sponsor, because that's the person that's guiding you through the work. I would never, ever say, you know, like not to do what your sponsor says, because some of the, that call, uh, listen, I don't know who sponsors in here, but I have enough with my sponsors coming back saying they've done this. I go, where'd you get that direction? Outside the coffee shop, having the fag with me pal, Dave, down the road. I'm like, okay. That's how you get, hey, that's not for me. So we have to do though, as was said there, and it's highlighted, indirect amends may be necessary. So we don't avoid the amend process because some of the years, like it says there, contacting someone who's hurt and still from the bands of the, your misdeeds. Um, Anwar's got a raised hand there, Anwar. Well, come in Anwar, just unmute yourself. Good evening, family. Um, I think we need timing is essential, meaning that uh, we shouldn't be rushing into it and neither should we procrastinate on it. Because of fear. If yeah. I, yeah. that's all. Yes, yes. 
and obviously with uh, what you just said, Archie, um, with direction and guidance from from the sponsor, obviously. Yeah, I'll, I'll share some experience on step nine of my own. Uh, the biggest um, harm that I caused, I, I believe, and my biggest regret, and the thing that drove me into recovery and caused me guilt and shame, I was never able to make that amend. Because my sponsor said very clearly about your, your amending this process is to stay out their life. They don't want you. I wanted absolution. I wanted the guilt and the shame removed. I wanted prodigal sons type scenarios. That was all about me. Although the literature says the amends are for us, ourselves, we can't do so. It's um, absolution and removal of guilt is like a byproduct of step nine that it says, isn't it? Removal of guilt is a byproduct. It's not our motive for step nine. And um, so anyway, that's just a little page of the literature. I'm gutted I can't find the other one. So directions and questions is the little page. So often questions are closed questions, which is simple yes or no. They're useful for finding out facts. This is highlighted in step 10 when you do your personal inventory with the Holt. Um, I, look, I've ne I don't know anyone in London Fellowship, but often when we ask an old timer what to do, we're amazed with the simplicity of the answer. Robert the Badger, one of the characters in the London Fellowship, is, his answer to everything is generally, uh, go to meetings, don't pick up. That's his answer for everything. Absolutely everything. So just saying... Um, I'm looking for more spiritually weighty gravitas at times when actually it is a very simple um, answer, right? What are we saying about musts? So what I'm going through here is, you know, this, I think in the in the steps, there's a uh, 47 must words. So they're not optional. It's like there's one there. <clears throat> um, it says, look, our experience tells us that we must become willing before this step will have an effect. So you have to do work and it, to actually find that willingness and not just be doing it begrudgingly, but there's, um, I'm coming to that in a minute, the, 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 the one that I'm thinking more of now is the one in step two. In step two, it says, um, this step is necessary or the rest of the steps don't work. So I was paraphrasing that, but it's along them lines. So people who skip over step two with a minimum of fuss, the rest of the steps aren't going to work according to the literature. It says if we don't find our relationship or something with a higher power. Now, <clears throat> mine's not mine, mine in that process of step two wasn't about finding God. It was just identifying the possibility of something greater than me, is what it says. It was just accepting the possibility of something greater to me creates the space for me to hand over or not, not hand over, I apologise, turn over to that, whatever that may be. I don't have to define it. I don't have to give it a name. I don't have to say it's this or that. Just the possibility that it exists is enough for me to continue with the rest of the steps. That's what it says in step two. So what it does say is uh, it's necessary. It's not optional. It's not nice. And this one, again, states very specifically, if you don't find, if it's a must. If you don't become willing, this step's going to have no effect. If you're just paying lip service, and, uh, and there are a number of exercises to do in the literature to find that willingness, pray or otherwise become willing. There's plenty of exercises. Now I'm going to start rounding this up now and move it into the question and answer section. And this is, I love this one. Maybe some of the, some of the, where's the Americans? There's a few of them in there. Hello. Hello. I mean, you gave us this, didn't you? What I have to say. Uh, I'm here. I, he's a uh, Scottish in our origin, really. It is. I'll just say that one. Just throw that one in there. All right. So, Thank you, Archie. Thank you for acknowledging the, the Scottish yeah. connection. We yeah. appreciate that. So, you know, let me just answer the question. Right. I'm going to ask you, it's a very simple question based in recovery. 
who can give me a definition of because we're hey, practice these principles in all our affairs, yeah. And we're not going to mention honesty, open minded willingness. The literature tells us these are the tools we use to work the steps, yeah. Right, and then I suppose it's a personal journey because we can interpret this literature how we want. Anyone, anyone who goes down that honesty, open minded step one, two, three, right? Uh, let's have a debate, yeah. First of all, we need to know what is a principle. If you're going to practice them, what is not, don't listen, what is a principle? What's the definition of a principle? No looking in the dictionary, but you should afterwards. Yeah. Who'd like to give us the definition of a principle? Trina. I'm an addict named Trina. I think it's a moral belief. Yeah. Okay. That's a nice definition. I like that. Uh, Viv NA was next. Yeah, I think Viv, uh, an ideal. An ideal. Okay. Rob. I'm an addict. My name's Rob. And uh, I think the best way is, you know, when I hear someone share their experience, strength, and hope, and what they've done in their recovery, they've given me an example. Uh, they didn't give me direction, but they gave me an example of what worked for them. And all those people who shared their experience, strength, and hope with me, I'm very thankful for them. Uh, they weren't preaching to me. They weren't telling me what to do. They gave me a living example that I can live a day without picking up a drug, come to come to and go to Narcotics Anonymous as I please, and I can read the steps and interpret them the way I think it works in, in my life. And that's given me a very healthy, very loving, compassionate program that I can welcome others with opposing points of views and give them a hug. And I am so glad that Narcotics Anonymous has got the door open for me and I'm gonna keep the door open for other people. Thanks for letting me share. Well said, beautiful. I'd encapsulate that to say sharing and caring. Yeah, just say that because it's on the next slide. Erica. Uh, hi, yeah. I'm quite early um, into all this stuff, but um, I think it's the principle of something that you live by. Like I would say an ideal, but maybe that's too too wishy-washy, but you abstract. know what I mean? Yeah, it's a bit by. abstract, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Right, missed the 42 days, and then we'll come on to um, what my understanding is. Yeah, Mr. 42 days. Yeah, I'm yeah. here. Um, I think um, a principle would be like, you know, um, like an axiom, like an objective truth, a fundamental truth. You know, like the program, you know, the book says it works, right? Something yeah. that works and that will not fail if applied correctly. That's a principle. Ah, okay. It's a nice definition. I like it. Um, a simple definition of a principle in the dictionary is a behavior generally good. A set of principles, a set of behaviors you can live your life by. A guide to living, some people call it, don't they? That's a dictionary definition. But that leads me, we're going to get Rory. Rory, go on, because we haven't heard from you. Oh, you know what? Hi, everybody. Uh, good evening over there. And I, I, I like that definition because in the long run, the principle always has to do with my behavior the way my outlook on life is. And uh, it affects my behavior, my perspective. If it's not right and lined up with certain moral principles that we've been taught as kids and, and parents or whatever, um, uh, you, you know, the principle like treat, the, treat people like you want to be treated. That's, that's, that's a principle because it has something to do with my behavior and my conduct, the way I treat people. And, and that's what principle is all about. It, it is re relative to my behavior. I think God is more concerned about my conduct than how much I know. <laughs> um, you know hey. yeah, thanks yeah. a lot. Right, thanks, Rory. Right, so another one, who knows the 12 basic principles of the basic text of Narcotics Anonymous? Anyone? Does anyone know where they are? 
listed. <laughs> I think Viv's got his hand up. Viv, do you want to come in? Oh, Viv. Oh, actually, I didn't have my hand up. Sorry. All <laughs> right, Stan. Right. Uh, Paul, got a question for you before we move on to the, ne the, the next bit, yeah? Um, that that um, link that you had to the uh, literature? Yes, the website. So when you get a link for the step working guide, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the times it's that East Coast one, yeah? Yeah, and no, they, we, we don't do that anymore. We don't, yeah. we don't, we don't do that. Okay, anyway, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not too bothered if you do, but I've got a copy of that. And um, I've got a copy, I have a paper copy of it and of the Living Clean, and I've got like uh, a soft copy of the draft version of the Step Working Guide that had this same list of principles for every step and its breakdown, but there was too much debate about it and it was removed for the print copy. But I am gonna like take you to a list of these principles set out in step 12. So in step 12, the basic text dependent. So this is page 51, but that might be from the fifth edition. So, and they're not listed in number like that. I've done that. So, but, if somebody struggles with reading and writing, you can introduce them to these basic behavioral principles. <clears throat> but these are laid out in an order of 12 like this. And if you study the basic text, you will see how they relate in that order to each step. Like at the end of step one, second to last paragraph, it says we found hope. Everyone's aware of willingness for step six, aren't they? Faith, I mentioned patience in nine, unconditional love of step 11 and step 12, shame and caring. They are listed in the basic text in step 12 in that order and used to be listed in that order for each step on the step working guide. And then because there's hundreds of principles now, isn't there? Mm -hmm. uh, you can get all of those for each step in the step working guide. And then, uh, <clears throat> right, I've got it. I don't know if anyone still wants to see that. Or has anyone got any comments to make about that list of 12 basic principles? Is that new to anyone who's been around for some time? Anyone like to? No, nothing. So everyone was aware of them in the step 12 with the basic text. Archie, can I just ask something, right? So, yeah. and in the working guide that it, it mentions in step 12, it mentions steadfastness as being a spiritual principle. Yeah. So what does that come under out of the 12 that's there? Is it like a steadfastness? I wouldn't, I wouldn't like, hazard a guess at this moment in time. That's what I was saying. There's been additional yeah. principles. These are the 12 basic principles. You know, there's, there's things out there like, what about when, I don't know when people were <laughs> six or seven, hey, one of the uh, the most elusive principles is restraint. So these are, we, these are, it's not an exhaustive list, but it's just like pointing out there's some basic principles to you could help somebody who can't read and write and would struggle with the step working guide, even if it was audio. You can introduce them to a simple program with these behaviors. So just just saying. Basic, listen, I'm a basic text boy. I've worked through the step working guide. I've worked, I've done I've done a number of you know I've do my exercises from. Can I just say all you step working guide babies? I'm saying that I eh? is like the NA steps. There's no NA steps. I eh? the NA sponsor and the twelve steps and the step working guide. What do you think we were doing before the step working guide? I eh? and if you read the step working guide which says is an accompaniment to it works how and why. I'm just wondering how many people who work from the step working guide are studying the step in that it works how and why before they even uh, approach one of the steps in the step working guide. It also says you can add questions and take them away as needed. Just don't work without a sponsor. I have, a, I have an issue with giving brand newcomers a step working guide and telling them to go away and come back when they've finished. Uh, you know, that's, that's not sponsorship. 
in my book, my opinion. That's my humble opinion. Doug, what you, what you got to say, Doug? Um, I like what you just said. In fact, that's the instruction my sponsor gave me when I first did my first round of steps was to read it, the step in the basic text, the it works, how and why, highlight it, uh, figure out what I connected with, and then start on the step. But yeah. I, I had a question because you kind of, you were alluding to it. I was like, this is exciting because you said there's no such thing as what uh, narcotics anonymous steps or whatever. Because when you asked that question, I was like, yeah, at our, in the Alano Club of San Jose, if you guys ever come to San Jose, in the, in the big room, there's, and it's mainly, there's mainly AA meetings there, but there's other fellowships, but it has this exact same list, you know, from, from the, from the AA fellowship. So my question was, what, in your opinion, what is the substance of, other than the fact that alco alcoholism is replaced by the word addiction, what's the substance of difference between the steps? Is it just the 12 steps? I mean, why do people call it the NA steps? Well, I, I, well, it's just something that's evolved in my observation since the step working guide that they differentiated. Um, there's, a no, there's a number of ways to work the steps and um, I think it fits the individual. And like, I think for me, there's a danger of us becoming isolated and in a silo to say there's only one way to work the steps. It's this guide. Um, in fact, when it was first being devised, it was initially called the Step Writing Guide, wasn't it? And then it was changed to the Step Working Guide. Um, we've, we, we've built upon the steps from the Mothership AA. We've built upon them. It was necessary. I think the, if you look at, this is my opinion, the difference between the alcoholic and the addict um, is in the spiritual psyche of um, the difference is not one's better and one's worse, is that what an addict in generally goes through is um, ostracization because it's illegal. What they're doing is supposed to be illegal. So then it gets called immoral. The drinkers is legal and they're just told, oh, they just go a little bit heavy. So there's some psychological differences in what I tell myself, this is wrong, and the damage that causes, and that is a different damage caused with the alcoholic, possibly. This is just an opinion, by the way, where the alcoholic is telling themselves something else. I should be able to cope with this. I should be able to cope with this. The addict is saying, I shouldn't be doing this. I shouldn't be doing this. And there's just nuances that are different. Now, what I do is criminal. What I do to attain my drugs is criminal. More often than not, that's something that a lot of AA members don't get incarcerated. I know a lot do, but there's a lot of them where it's just a different path of destruction. All leads the same to death and spiritual bankruptcy, but there's certainly some differences amongst drugs as well and what you do to attain them and different geographical locations. But um, for me, with the, the big book literature, there's not enough work around step six and seven when they initially go through their book and just the, just reading of the book. Um, and now I, I think my one, two and three was came about in my rock bottom. When I sat in meetings, in step meetings, I was going, I'm sure I've done that, I'm sure I've done that. And I hadn't done any work yet. And then I had to, so I had done a one, two, three in my rock bottom. I'd had enough. I admitted it and started seeking something else. But it was rocky. It was shaky. There was no foundation. I had to do some work around smashing the denial, identifying the power, and like making that decision. That was for me. And and so there's just some differences. But you know, it's for me. What works for me might kill you. You know, I'm just happy if you're engaging in a recovery process and you're finding peace and serenity in your life and an emotional stability and you don't need to seek dependence on chemicals to get through a day. I no need to live like that with the program we've got. And I, and I am solely a Narcotics Anonymous guy. I've, I, um, I've had one sponsor. I had one home group. I do one fellowship. That's for 14 years. 
Um, if you go to another fellowship because you feel that's what works for you, good luck. I'm not somebody who says you shouldn't be here in this fellowship sharing them. But I will just say this, another opinion before we go to the hands. I qualify for a lot of mem uh, fellowships. Just because I attend one doesn't mean I'm a member. Uh, the decision, which implies action, lies with the individual to become a member. That implies that you do service in that fellowship to be a member. You're not a, you're not a tourist, a visitor. Uh, you do what you do. <laughs> anyway, that's another controversial topic, isn't it? But what, have you noticed what we're doing, though? We're talking and debating recovery. We're engaged in the process of shaping our thoughts. As a result of this process and things like it, we live and enjoy life about using drugs. That's my catchphrase at the minute. Mr. 42 Days Senior. It's a catchy day. I hope he's got more than 42 days. I uh, doesn't have to change. Do you have to change your name every day? Yeah, you do. <laughs> is that yes, I do. What's is, the, it, is that South California? Where's he gone? That is that is so cow. You're not you're not. Californian sober, are you? Hey, I'm Cal. I'm California clean. Since we're talking <laughs> about designation with you know, with hey. with, with fellowships and whatnot, I'm California yeah, yeah. clean. How about that? <laughs> but what hey. you know, um, it's interesting because you know this this dialogue. I don't really can, think. Can it's I just debate. can I just ask then? Is this Cali Fli Cali clean like uh, uh, to to oppose that sober thing? Since we're talking like about it. the differences in fellowships, yes. I, I like to go that route. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Go yeah. on then. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. I, I decided to be congruous today, uh, Archie. Yeah. But um, anyway, I mean, I think this is a great dialogue because, I, you know, when I when I read the books, my sponsor had me get six at a time. I mean, he got give me. I, he loaded me up with the, the literature, right? Which is great because I think the literature is the foundation of the fellowship. So. Um, I read the pretext, I read the introductions, right? And I read the prefaces and all of those things that come along with the literature before I even get to the actual chapters that he wants me to read. And, you know, it talks about like, you know, the World Service Convention and how the people got together and, you know, they discussed these things, right? And everybody's opinion with at the table was valid. And that's how they came, came to these conclusive, right? <laughs> principles and, 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 and ideas. And, um, you know, you mentioned that uh, the difference, I think a fundamental difference between um, this fellowship opposed to AA was the criminality, right? I mean, yeah, the, 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 the term drug addict carries with it automatically a stigma, right? From society, a societal stigma, right? Because in order to get the drug, you have to break the law, right? You can go to any liquor store or wherever, or spirits place or whatever, whatever, depending on what country you're in, and you can get alcohol. You go to a pub and you can drink it freely, right? But in order to get narcotics, you have to break the law, right? So automatically there is a darker element to, you know, the, the actual getting and using of this, the, the, this, this kind of activity that we partake in, um, in our active addiction. So I think, um, you know, just off the top, when someone hears drug addict or alcoholic, I think the addict, the drug addict part, is you know a little bit more sinister to some people, and I think that's a problem that um, I had initially identifying as an addict, right? Because that's something that you know goes beyond the societal norm or the regular thing that people have problems with, right? And so yeah, that was a hard uh, hill for me to climb because of that aspect, that stigma that it carried. Well, thanks, thanks. What's your name anyway? My name is Shannon. Shannon. Lovely yeah. to meet you, Shannon. Yeah. You too, Seba. Archie. Seba. I don't know if I'm saying it right. There's a handle. It's Seba. Want to come in, Seba? Yeah, Seba. I'm just having a cigarette. I do apologize. Uh, all right. Yeah. Can you come back to me, Seba? Seba. Thank you. Seba, yeah. You just kill yourself slowly there on the outside. And no judgment. <laughs> no judgment. <laughs> I can hear you, though. <laughs> right. Listen, um, yeah, we got oh. that right. Anyone tell me why they put chapter five at chapter five instead of chapter one? 
four and a half pages that'll save your life. It's called What Can I Do? So, you know, somebody like that who hasn't, where's Flo? Flo, come on, you haven't spoke yet. Can you have a little read of that for us? Oh no, let me put it back. I'm trying to see the faces again. It's difficult seeing the faces and the page. Come on, Flo. And then we, if you can read um, half of it and then we'll get Ben in to have a little read. It doesn't you go just, on my radar. Do you want me to read it? Yeah, gradually, yeah. Okay. I'm Flo, I'm an addict. Gradually, we replace our habits with new ways of living. We become willing to change. We go to meetings regularly, get and use telephone numbers, read literature, and most importantly, we don't use. We learn to share with others. If we don't tell someone we are hurting, they will seldom see it. When we reach out for help, we can receive it. Another tool for the newcomer is involvement with the fellowship. As we become involved, we learn to keep the program first and take it easy in other matters. We begin by asking for help and trying out the recommendations of other people at the meetings. It is beneficial to allow others in the group to help us in time. We will be able to pass on what we have been given. We learn that service to others will get us out of ourselves. Our work can begin with simple actions, emptying ashtrays, making coffee, cleaning up, setting up for a meeting, opening the door, trading a meeting and passing out literature. Do you want me to read the whole thing? No, let's have Ben. <laughs> Thanks, Flo. Ben? Hi, I'm, I'm Ben, an addict. Uh, yeah. doing, doing these things helps us feel a part of the fellowship. We have found it helpful to have a sponsor and to use this, this sponsor. Sponsorship is a two-way street. It helps both the newcomer and the sponsor. The sponsor's clean time and experience may well depend on the availability of sponsors in a locality. Sponsorship for newcomers is also the responsibility of the group. It is implied and, and informal in its approach but it is the heart of, of the NA way of recovery from addiction, one addict helping another. Thanks, Ben. Uh, let me see what the other, what does that say? I can't even see it. Oh yeah, hey. <laughs> hey, there's it. I have no idea what I'm supposed to say about this. I've forgotten since I've done it. But if it says the personality change is what we need in the basic steps, I haven't put the page number up. How will I know if I've had one? Yeah, personality defined as a class of people, places, or things. So if they've changed, I've changed, is evidence of a personality. So I'll tell you what I mean by that one as well. What I thought recovery would give me and what it's given me are two different things. There was, I thought a spiritual awakening would be evidenced by the voice in my head speaking with a nice posh accent. Now there's Jermaine down there, what's happened, Jay? And, um, but it still speaks in this squeaky scouse voice. And so I'd be like, and people would say to me, you've had spiritual change. You're on this, you've got it. So I don't feel different. I've had a change, but I find it difficult to see, but it's evidenced in what I do. Not how I think, not how I feel, and what I do. And in the recovery process, I've engaged and took responsibility. Our reading card says our inability to accept personal responsibility. That's not me anymore. You know, the, the, the change isn't a sense of feeling. It's in the way you live your life and how you feel about that. Um, the, for me anyway, that, that's what that was. And um, it's, it's, a, it's a strange, thing not seeing the change in self but others seeing it in you and this you know was remember we're talking about people in early recovery fearful that the change is too much it's not achievable there's too much to change and we just change little things stop hitting people <laughs> hey stop stealing stop lying stop littering you see all these are principles yeah Principles of tolerance, principles of accountability, behaviors that you can see and you can monitor. You can write these things down and see, today I act differently than I did before I got here. 
that's the evidence of change, not how you think, not how you feel, although your thinking will change as a result of this. You just that you don't recognize it. For me, is that <clears throat> um, the essence of who I am has not changed over these 14 and a half years. So I was scared I was going to lose who I was. I was being scared of the wrong thing. You know, what I was losing was the way I lived my life and the environment that I occupied and the people I associated with. And that's been nothing but wonderful. I was scared of losing the fear because it was familiar. And it says that in our text. Right, what else we got? Here are the daily suggestions for working a program, as in chapter nine, just for today. And this is what I give to newcomers. In the morning, pray for a clean day, read just for today and add two to the gratitude list from the night before. Attend a meeting, be of service, get a home group. Call a newcomer or another member. Ring your sponsor and in the evening do a gratitude list, 10 items, and give thanks for a clean day. And remember the four S's, sponsor steps, sharing and service. I mean, there's another little one that we put in there with make sure you do a reading at every meeting that you go to. So you can start learning what the literature tells you and how to work a program. Um, that's it finished, but I'm just going to go back to this. In your book studies, these are the instructions on the screen there. So that's what you should be doing in a basic text study group, going page by page with the highlighters, looking at suggestions. Where does it give me a direction? There is a slide missing here where we put in the uh, statements. That, um, but yeah, do this. Find yourself a little venue, get yourself a couple of books and some, get yourself a new book. Yeah. And there's another thing just on adding to this. I will go back over my literature where I've highlighted it. And I was 100% in arguing with people that that was a direction. And then I've gone back afterwards and read it and gone, that's not a fucking direction. <laughs> hey, the literature doesn't change, but I do. And the meanings of the literature changes as I go through this. It's a simple little book of, of like, you know, a hundred and odd pages really without the stories. And I, oh my God, they teach me still every day. They keep continuing to give me new. I'll tell you what, what was that one? Um, yeah, I'm just going to say one more and then we'll see what any questions and that, right? Cool, I was two years clean sitting in a meeting and when I realized in step one, what the spiritual aspect of my disease was, my total self-centeredness. Took me two years to hear that. Yeah? The spiritual aspect of my disease, my self-centeredness. There's only one way to treat that, being of service. Now, there's a lot more to do to find peace and serenity. But uh, imagine it, hey, somebody who's like, I was two years clean, being through the steps, sponsoring and still didn't know what I suffered from properly. I, I can only hear when I'm ready to hear, and um, and I forget what I knew. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a fantastic journey. Right, questions, opinions, that's a good one. Never mind experience, opinions. I, are, you, are you finished with the slideshow? Um, yeah, do, you want slide to stop, do you want to stop yeah. sharing so we can see everyone on the... Yeah. I can see everyone anyway, so I'm all right. Yeah, but they can't, can they? Nobody. Hi. Right. If you can, can you hit stop share, uh, Archie? Oh, yes. Thought you were doing it. No, no, you have to. Shit, it made loads of stuff come up now on my screen. There we go. Fantastic. So do we have, uh, what are you looking for, Archie, feedback, or do you have a question for the no, group? I'm not feedback. Fucking hell, it's not rehab, is it? Hey, oh, you've been doing fantastic. Hey, I really like you. Hey, you know what, can I just, in anyone who, like, I know there's people who know me on here, and like, and I know they don't do that, like, but listen, if you're new, yeah, and you go to a meeting and somebody shares their experience, strength, and hope, don't give them feedback. 
Hey, they've been talking about themselves for 20 minutes. They don't need you to tell them more about themselves. You should be sharing your experience using the time for your recovery. Hey, fucking rehabs. I used to work in a rehab for like seven years. <laughs> hey, I'm out of that. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Is it time for questions now, Paul? Yeah, anything. Share Anwar, Anwar, Anwar from Johannesburg, come in. Okay, uh, I'm sitting with the fifth edition, uh, basically. Ah. They got a sixth edition as well. Yeah. Uh, I wanted to know, is there any difference in the two? All right. What Both are the differences? Have you got the fifth edition in front of you now? But when Sebi and I don't know who was reading now from the what... What, now, what, uh, have you got the fifth edition in front of you I was now? following, but I don't know if I was following on the same pages, but I went to the chapter, chapter five. Okay. There's, there's, differences on the, there's differences on the page number. I think you're breaking up a little bit there, Ashi. I'm not, you are. The machine does good. Yeah, not me, mate, honestly. <laughs> and what, there are differences on the page numbers. Between the five and the six. Is he gone? I think he's frozen, aren't you? Yeah. Anyone else got a fifth edition? There's a lovely little trick on it. If you go into the back of the fifth edition to the glossary, yeah, the reference, and look up the word love. Have you found it, Seabat? You can unmute, Seabat. Sorry, where is it? Is it in the back? Yeah, in the back. Sorry. Yeah, the, the glossary, the references of like the words. J P L L O. Love. I lost you guys there. My signal went okay, bad. Okay, okay. Yeah, hold on. I'm, uh, have you got it? See wait, that? wait, wait. Um, listening, living, clean. Um, no, there's no. Oh yeah, yeah, love. Yeah, hundred and thirty. Ages it on. It says one thirty, one forty. Oh, but that's not the fifth edition. It is XB. X, our symbol, X, what? Where's page X? Get page X. X. What page? What's X? Five. No, it's the letter X, Roman numerals in the preface. It says our symbol, XB, preface to the sixth edition, XBII. Well, that's preface of the sixth edition, and then it's not the fifth edition. Yeah, so I've got the fifth edition here, Archie. You got a fifth edition, Luca? Yeah. So what's wrong with this I one, got Archie? A, I'll come back to that. I got a minute. fifth edition, yeah. Fucking going to die a death, this, I tell you. Uh, it's going to okay, fall yeah. flat. Right, Luca, what's it, what's it say in the back about pay, love? What page is it on? It said, uh, see Compassion X520. Page oh, yeah. five. What page is love on, though? Love. It's love, yeah. F uh, page X. five. Don't X. page X. X five. five. Ah, fuck it, not doing it. <laughs> if he goes to the front of the, if he goes to the front of the fifth edition, there is no page X. It's blank. That's telling you what basic text knows about love. You need to be in code or somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> It's a nice little trick in the fifth edition. Little little ploy. Yeah. Anyone else? Anwar, right. did you want to come Anwar, back in? The fifth and sixth edition, the 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 the, num the pages are out about two pages different. I've got a sex. So what is the <laughs> what's the difference? Um, no, just they like so if 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 I say page, because what what I was putting on the slides was from sixth edition. So it's page 51 in the sixth edition. It might be on page 53 in the fifth edition. Right, <laughs> thank okay. you. And I think yeah, some of the so. stories are different, aren't they, Archie? Uh, yeah, all the stories, well, most of them are different, isn't it? Yeah. I don't bother reading the stories myself. I've got my own, and I listen to <laughs> everyone else's, and okay. not read them. <laughs> no use to me. Aye, aye, aye. I'm not interested in you. <laughs> I might read them when they put mine in there. Hey, hey, mine was... My name's Archibald. That's why I'm an addict. Hey, fucking Ouija's. Hi, Gillian. <laughs> Archie, can I ask you a question, please? Yeah.
yeah, go on. No, the uh, the just for today, but uh, in in edition six, there's no um, I can't see the references, but yeah. the edition five has got the references. Is that is that right? Yeah. I don't know. Maybe write to your MP or something. Um. Yeah, uh, it's difficult because I see two different readings in there. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Does it matter? Well, I nah. like to. Yeah. Nah. No, okay. you're reading the literature. <laughs> That's what matters, isn't it? You're reading the literature. Yeah. Doesn't matter what it fucking says. Just read it. Just read it. Okay. Oh yeah, is sorry. There, is there any now, isn't it? Okay. It's not spiritual to swear, is it? I don't know what page it says that like. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> is there is there anyone here? I, I, is there anyone here who I could ask a question to about the basic text and they'd feel confident in answering it? Anyone? You want to just raise your virtual hand if you put your hand up if you feel like go on, ask me a question. Over the come on. We're all scared in case we get it wrong. <laughs> yeah, it's Crystal. All right, Crystal, yeah. Are you ready? Unmute yourself, Crystal. You can't even recall what the just for today says, so <laughs> you're not on much of a winner here, are you? Oh, she's bailing out now. All right. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you anyway. Are you ready? No, for, are you ready for the question? Yeah. Can I ask you, it has nothing to do with what you just said. I was just curious when I heard you say, when you went to NA, you had never relapsed. Right? No, since when, I've been in NA the right. first week, yeah. Not so, first meeting, never, it took me a couple of days, but not since, no. Right, so you never, you once you got there, you never relapsed. Once I made the decision, no, I've not relapsed. Okay, that's, I just wanted to know, I got that clear when you said that. Yeah, and I've got a number of responses, that's the same story. Yeah. So, is there anyone want it? Was it? Oh, blind. It's, it's gonna fall down. Right, well, actually, I'm I'm not yeah. interested in answering the question, but but I I'd really like to hear what the question is. Yeah. So much in, right. in the question itself. Who's got a Go basic ahead. text with him? Sabat, so you can like, yeah. Yeah, we got one. We got. I got. Right. How heavy is he it? That's with the question. How heavy is it? What a buster. What a buster. Ah, yeah. I uh, like that. You know when oh, people geez, like actually quote anything out of the basic gosh. text? How fucking heavy is it? Hey, get some humility. Oh, Today's yeah, reading, isn't it? Uh, anyway, just um, I, I don't take I myself to die. recovery, but I take me recovery serious. Yeah? I, I engage with you. Crystal, please. Crystal, yeah. mute yourself. Yeah. Sting keeps yeah. on going. Can one. Right, and anyway. more too, please. We're at the end, aren't we? We're at the end, Paul. We've got some time if you wanted to. Um... No, the traditions say meetings should start and finish on time. Yeah, we, we, got to show. we got 15 minutes. You said now and half to me. Yeah, it started <laughs> at quarter past seven. Oh, all right. I'm talking that we are. Sorry, apologies. 15 minutes is not going. Hey, Shannon, what's happening? No, I had a question. You said that um, every time you read the, the, the basic text or the literature, um, you get something new all the time and you've been reading it for, you know, as long as you've been clean, right? Yeah. So um, you also mentioned that from your definition, a principle or definition that you've uh, kind of put together from reading the literature is uh, a behavior, right? So. Yeah. When you read the text and you gain something new, is that based on the change in behavior? Well, well, I've changed as a person right, right. through my behavior. It's a program of action, isn't it? Right. And that's what we say, prayer in action, the program of recovery. If you don't pray, you have to meditate or some other form of work in the step 11. So. Just through my actions, I've had a spiritual awakening, personality change, psychic change. What I am, who I am, is different. Now, as a newcomer, that's very scary. What, what I say to people in new recovery is, it's just the succession of small challenges that are very achievable, small fears that you can overcome. Facing them fears is character building. 
You know, we talk yes, about defects. defects. Um, we're not made of defects. We're made of human traits that are blown out of proportion by fear, as it says in step six. I mean, we are. Uh, in and of myself, I am okay. You know I mean, but when fear is ruling me and distorting my thinking, that which then distorts my behavior, I'm not okay. And when I practice this program, I'm not dictated by fear. We were having a discussion, and I'm away working in a hotel with people in recovery. And then, um, like, my job enables me, like, really gratefully to I work with people in addiction, not in recovery terms. It's not about recovery, but we work with them. And, uh, and and so a lot of the people that I work with are in recovery. And there's a lot of people who work with us not in abstinence space recovery either. They found a different path. And it which is, can be a bit like with, for some 12 steppers. But, um, you know, if you've got faith in your program and your higher power and your God, whatever you, you seek to call it, then other people's journey has no reflection on you and what you do at all. Um, so, and I was saying to them, this is just, I'm going to throw some little step nine stuff in it about like, well, we, I don't know why I'm just sharing it because like it, it's come to my mind, me thinking. So in step eight, um, I had to do that. It works how and why exercise about um, trying to put myself in the shoes of my victims and, and the understanding that I then developed that I could never envisage without doing that exercise was, you know, our concept, you keep what you got by giving it away. Yeah. yeah. Well, I was full of fear and addiction and the people who I come into contact and the lives I touched, I caused harm. The exact nature of that harm was, is that I left fear in their lives. Mm. So that's my becoming willing in step eight, like it said in the slide before, how do I become willing? Well, I had, I had a, a small epiphany awakening that the real harm that I caused was the fear I left in their lives. And what I'm doing in step nine is going to reclaim the fear that belongs to me. Oh, that's beautiful. And that's how they heal and recover in the step nine process. That's where the freedom comes from, is that our relationship is not just restored to how it was, but to how it should be. You know, there's, these are the things, you know, I, another one was either um, step four. I, I don't know if anyone knows Linkin Park. <laughs> uh, <laughs> song, song, what I've done. Yeah. I turned to face myself to cross out what I'd become. Yeah. That came out when I was writing the step four. And my mum, God bless her, was a alcoholic Glaswegian Valium addict very violent and she got taken by alcoholism at 47 uh, and I was 10 years after her death writing my first step four when that song came out and then lyrics came and it and, and, and I went it was my inventory but I seen because she was the headline and star after my step four my mum and then um, and I seen her powerlessness in my inventory and then um, I, I get emotional now thinking about it it allowed me to start grieving 10 years after their passing. And I cried in my step form and she was just powerless like me. Gifts, the gifts, the one promise, freedom from active addiction, but the many, many gifts from engaging in the recovery process. We could talk all night about all the different gifts that I was given in each step, in each service position, each sponsorship, each argument around the fucking committee table <laughs> yeah paul you got your hand up yeah thanks archie just just see what you were saying there about that song being burned on your brain it was interesting i was just thinking about that so when i came back so i've been coming around to na since 2005 in and out in and out i've now got 15 months one of the biggest turning points for me was hearing uh, I think from Lucas sponsor actually, Paul, it's the principles that make your recovery possible. You know, and I've been coming in and out and never heard that, right? So I study the other basic texts, but also it works how and why. And there's a passage that's burned into my brain that when we start working the program, we start to work the principles and see the effect that our behavior has on people, either good or bad. And that is called a conscience. 
and that conscience is a reflection of our relationship with our higher power. Right, it's just some, my mind's all befuddled coming in from active addiction, but that is just locked into my head. And I'd love to hear from you out of, if you had to rip away all the pages of the basic text and just leave with the, what are, or maybe you've got a couple, what's burned into your mind from the basic text? What is the big important bit for you? Um, well, um, I would possibly say um, the conscious contact that we speak of in step 11 is the perceived in 10 steps. So let's take away what God's will is, this, that, and the other, and who God is, but just simply working the first 10 steps improves your conscious contact with a higher power on a daily basis. It just says it dead simply there. I know what God's will. Um, I know what God's will is a lot of the time in the fact that, like, if Whatever, I think it's today's reason, or was it yesterday's? It's today's surrender and yesterday's was fit to the fit to what is. Maybe it's all the same. But um, anything that happens in my life that I didn't instigate is God's will. Bam, dead simple, just like that. If I didn't instigate it, if I wasn't the cause root for it, and it happens in my life, it's God's will. And like I spent addiction trying to push back against God's will and make the world Archie's will. And that didn't work. And so I have a 12-step program that allows me to fit myself to what is. Simple, isn't it? Aye. Nice, thank you. Simple. No matter how much weed, LSD, or anything else that enhanced my creativity, I would never have come up with that. And I was, I'm somebody who come up with a theory of time and relativity at 12 years old on acid. You know what I mean? <laughs> Okay, well, listen, we've just got a few minutes left. Is there anyone got any final questions for, for Archie before we before we close? Well, if not, maybe we can all unmute and give uh, Archie a round of applause and thank him for... Good job, Archie. Uh, okay. Good job, Archie. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you, Archie. Okay.